father of all motherfuckers. It's by Green Day. It's their thirteenth album. Unlucky for some. Oh, just wait. Uh, the Oakland, California pop punk superheroes have done things a little bit differently. They've they've done a Fallout Boy basically. They've just done a Fallout Boy. I spent the best part of ten years, probably more than that actually, defending Green Day to various people. Um, they're not exactly a band that desperately need um, someone like myself to defend them a lot because how many artists or bands can you think of who have made a um, generation defining generation defining album twice? You know, you got Dookie from back in the nineties. You had um, American Idiot in the two thousands. Didn't really make anything good in the two thousand tens, but never mind. Um, yeah, like even people slag off um, 21st Century Breakdown and there's such a Marmite album of Guns Rulers, I thought it was like one of the few examples of a band or an artist f um, following up a like career-defining album with something that, okay, wasn't quite as good because Lightning can't, in theory, Lightning can't strike twice. But at least getting something not shit to follow up by. I know a lot of people were a bit iffy with um, Unto the Locust by Machine Head. Um, personally, I like that one as well. I love 21st Century Breakdown. I have no idea if that's to do with the fact of where it sits in like how I listen to it. I used to listen to it every day when I go, went to school with my parents. Um, but I'll still rep for that album today. And I'll see people who say like it's a career opus on par with American Idiot. And I'll say it's one of the worst things they've ever done in their lives. In their career, sorry, which even taking away everything that came afterwards, no, it fucking isn't. Um, they did the Uno Dos Tres, which was really bollocks. You can probably get a good album collectively out of those three albums, but overall, it was pretty bum. I thought I really liked Revolution Radio. I went back to it to oh, for uh, Father of All. And there's maybe like a few songs that are okay. It's not the best, is it? But, you know, constantly just trying to make sure that, hey, everyone, it's okay. It's Green Day. It'll be good. It'll be good. You know what? It's just fucking not. It's just not good. Um, this album is fucking bollocks. It really is bad. It makes me so so angry that it's even out oh yeah which was the um was the second single that came out of it wouldn't even make it into the black album by weezer and the black album by weezer was fucking bollocks um the title track lead single sounds like a shit hives b-side from like 2005 um fucking i was a teenage teenager needs to get in the sea and never come back. That is an absolutely operation of a song. Um, the lyrics are, I was a teenage teenager, I am an alien visitor, my life's a mess and school is just for suckers. Billy Joe Armstrong is 48 years old and he's singing, school is for suckers. What a fucking dick. Like, come on, you're, you're a father. Just, it's so bad. It's so hilariously awful that they put those words to writing and no one at any point said, you know what? What if we just didn't? Just, just gonna throw it out there. What if we just didn't? Stab You in the Heart is the first rock and roll riff you learn on guitar by a band who's over 30 years into their existence, 13 albums in, and they're writing the very first thing you ever made on guitar. It's 26 minutes long, and even that feels too long. You know, like, Take the Mud and Crawl is passable, even though it does have a shit lyric about sucking his cock. Um, Sugar Youth is okay. I still can't make up my mind on Meet Me on the Roof. Roof. F, not TH. It's just 
awful. As the fucking nothing says fuck you like a unicorn. That whole ethos going into it is absolute trash. Um, that whole thing where it's like no Swedish producers, no trap beats, no this, no that. It's like no, no trap. Um, no, that was it. Trap beats, no trap beats, no Swedish producers. But what you've done is just made the bog standard cookie cutter pop punk that five sauce wouldn't even put out because they actually might have talent more than you. It's diabolical. It's so bad. Now they've the to desecrate the American idiot album art by putting that like really zoomed in with a unicorn to cover up the fucker part and motherfucker because that's edgy. It's shit. It's bad. It's terrible. It's every negative adjective you could ever put to music. And it's this. I'm so mad. I'm so upset. Green Day are were maybe. I'm not I don't know how much how angry I am at this. But Green Day at least were one of my favourite bands of all time. If it wasn't for American Idiot, I probably wouldn't be giving a shit about music. And then to have the gall to try and release something like this. I've heard a rumour that they're doing it on purpose so they can get out of the contract. But my fucking god, I if that's true. If that's true, and I don't know, there's no way of knowing, but if that's true, and I've, obviously I've got no way of knowing the ins and outs of their contract, no, no, no way of knowing the ins and outs of the average working day, but to give up all artistic and creative integrity to get out of a contract, because apparently they need to do three more albums, and then they can get off their contract and, get, and start afresh. But does this mean we're going to have two more iterations of Father or More Motherfuckers and before they can get off their record label and say, look, we're going to be Green Day again and then make something equally trash but this time they're trying. Ah, oh, fucking... I'm so... It's just awful. It's awful. It's very upsetting. They've done a Fall Out Boy. They've done a Blink-182. The 90s are dead, man. They're just fucking dead. They're dead... They hate you. They never loved you. They're never going to change. They're just dead. So that was a new Green Day album. It's called Father of All Motherfuckers. It's their 13th album. It's out now. If you hate yourself. <laughs>